Hello and welcome to Bicycle Touring Talk episode number 14. Bicycle Touring Talk is a series where I talk about my first bicycle tour based on my book Destinations Are Fake. I am George Schlackegg and I am the one and only. My book is available on Amazon. Just follow the link in the description. After my adventure of leaving New Orleans in a police cruiser across the Mississippi River and a very late breakfast at a Waffle House, I had a relatively quiet ride that day. The route took me through sugar cane country and a sleepy little town called Raceland. Quite the contrast from the hustle and bustle of New Orleans. I remember passing the sugar plant and its sweet-smelling exhaust just before entering the town. Raceland looked very picturesque. I resisted the temptation to spend more time there and stuck to my plan, which was to take a short break and grab a drink at one of the convenience stores. My destination for that day was Huma, where I had arranged accommodation through warmshowers.org which, by the way, is a great resource for cycling tourists. A couple who were both avid cyclists and curious about my bike tour were willing to accommodate me for the night. Due to Amy's busy work schedule, I only got to meet the man of the house, Phil, a cycling enthusiast who looked to be in top shape. It turned out he was in his early 60s and had been a heart patient before taking up cycling. I could hardly believe it. We had a conversation about bicycle touring. Both Phil and Amy were dreaming of doing a long bike tour in the near future, and it had been their reason to sign up with warm showers. Phil was an expert when it came to bicycles. He noticed right away that my bike was not high-end touring material, but he also understood that it was sufficient for what I was doing. I got to sleep in the spare bedroom and had to get up really early the next morning to join Phil for breakfast before he had to leave for work. It suited me fine because it would allow for more time on the road that day. From Huma, I joined US Route 90. The weather was perfect for cycling. It was in Louisiana first in New Orleans that I had discovered a new favorite lunch. Burger King had a special for the month of November. It consisted of two huge fatty burgers, Whoppers, and a soda with free refills. In hindsight, I believe that I literally became addicted to the high-calorie burgers and the sweet cold drink. My body had burned through all its fat reserves and needed more energy to fuel the ride. I had always liked burgers, so I was quite happy when I found a restaurant just in time for lunch in Morgan City, Louisiana. After the meal, I resumed my ride to Franklin, a little town I had chosen off the map as my destination for that day. I was riding through a beautiful region of Louisiana on a relatively quiet highway. At times, I hardly observed the landscape because Mexico was already on my mind. What was it going to be like? It was still early in the afternoon when I arrived at the Belmar Motel in Franklin. The fatigue resulting from an early start had caught up to me, so I checked into a room. The rooms were cheap, old, and comfortable. It was still daylight outside when I fell asleep watching TV. I woke up to a surprise the next morning. When I looked at my bicycle that was leaning against the wall across from the bed, I noticed a flat tire. My rear tire had gone flat. My first reaction was to roll over, but then I thought, well, really, I should consider myself lucky to get a flat the first flat of my tour in a cozy room instead of out on the road somewhere. The tire was patched in minutes 
and the cause had been a tiny piece of wire that had punctured the tire and the tube. So typical. The weather was considerably cooler that morning. I took my time. Somehow the fatigue had taken its toll, but my ride for the day wasn't going to be all that long. Abbeville wasn't too far away and it was the last town on my journey before I would hit a very long and lonely highway that was Louisiana number 82 also called the Grand Chenier Highway. I had a slow ride across a very scenic area and upon entering Abbeville I stopped at a Walmart to stock up on my groceries. My diet still consisted mostly of trail mix, fruits, and sandwiches. I ate a good part of my purchases right in front of the store after I was done shopping. A young employee spotted me. He was obviously curious. Where are you headed? Eh, where from? I told him I was from Canada and I was going to Mexico. Mexico. His expression changed as he spit on the ground. Oh man, Mexico. I wouldn't go there on the bicycle. He went on about a road trip that him and his friends supposedly had done a while back. It had ended in a robbery after their car had broken down somewhere in the mountains, he said. I was there once, and on the way back our car broke down in the mountains. We got robbed. I ain't going to set foot in that country ever again. I wasn't really sure how to respond, so I acted concerned just to play along. That got him going even more. Now he was right in his element, telling me about drug cartels and robbers and gruesome smuggling practices. They're the Mexico man, the drug cartels. And they use dead bodies to smuggle cocaine. Horror stories. Oh, oh, by the way, the coastal area of Louisiana is pretty scary. There are ghosts and stuff, you'll see. <laughs> so do you think I'm crazy? I finally decided to interrupt him. He paused briefly before grinning and saying, Ooh. You won't get your head chopped off. Now I had to laugh, and he started to realize that I hadn't taken him all that seriously the whole time. Good luck, buddy. He mumbled before walking away. I had been planning to camp at a commercial campground in Abbeville, but it turned out that it was for RVs only. Once again, I ended up in a cheap motel after spending considerable time asking around for possible campsites. The weather was changing. By the time I left Abbeville the next morning, the sky was cloudy, the air was humid, thick. There was no rain yet, but it only seemed like a matter of time. My idea was to take State Route 82 the Grand Chenier Highway. It was going to take me through swampland and wilderness. There were no towns or places to stop on my route for a very long way. My hope was to find accommodation at the Rockefeller Wildlife Reserve, which seemed to be within reach, but I was taking a chance. The prospect of rain bothered me, but then again I had seen days where it was overcast almost the whole day and I never caught a drop of rain. So it seemed reasonable to go ahead. I stayed completely dry for about 20 kilometers when in the middle of nowhere it slowly started to drizzle. The area was extremely quiet and I understood completely why some would consider it scary. At one point I encountered the remains of a dead crocodile on the road and prayed that there were no live ones lurking in the ditches. It reminded me of the guy at Walmart. The rain was light. At first I was barely getting wet and it actually made for a pretty good ride. I stayed fairly dry for most of the afternoon. Later in the day, I finally reached a small general store someone had told me about. 
I decided to stop for coffee and a snack and figure it out from there. There was an old lady behind the counter by herself. Coffee is on the house, young man. I was surprised and grabbed my coffee and a snack. And as I turned around, I saw that her face had turned very serious. You know, it'll get pitch black here in about an hour. Do you know where you're going to stay? I almost choked on my coffee. Of course I didn't. She now had a very concerned look on her face. The rain outside had gotten heavier. Was I going to be stuck here? What was I going to do? What was the hope of making it anywhere without getting soaked to the bone? Or worse, getting swallowed up by an alligator in the swampy, dark wilderness of coastal Louisiana. As you can see, I'm still alive to tell the story. You'll find out in the next episode what I ended up doing. So make sure you're subscribed and I would also like you to hit the like button. Like, like, like. And in the meantime, you can watch some of my other videos. Two of them are popping up on the screen just uh, right about now. See you next time.